So now we're going to be talking about passing data into a view. A lot of times your view is going to need a lot of data. So how do we pass data into the view? So if you recall, at the end of the previous lesson, we refactor all of our routes into this single line notation. This single line notation is great for cleanliness, but it's not so great when you need to pass in some data. So we're going to actually have to revert to be able to pass in some data. So we'll say route and we'll create a new one, a new get route. And we're going to say customers. It's going to be a new route that doesn't exist yet. And we're going to say function. And inside of our closure, if you remember, we can return a view. And the view that we're going to return is a new view that doesn't exist yet called customers. So this new view customers, I actually want to put that inside subdirectories. Typically, you won't have all of your views under a single directory. That's going to get cluttered really quick. So I'm going to add a new file here. And I'm going to call it maybe something like internals slash customers that blade that PHP. So now we see that PHP storm has created a directory called internals inside views. And we're going to have this customers that blade that PHP. So let's have an H one, we'll say customers. And of course, I want a list here of customers. But this list, of course, needs to be dynamic. And this data needs to come from something else. So let's go back to Chrome. And let's visit slash customers. And everything blows up. It says the views customers is not found. That makes sense because customers is not sitting in the views directory. Customers is sitting inside internals. So how do we tell Laravel to look for a view inside a directory? Well, we do that using the dot syntax. So you can say internals dot customers. And so now it's going to look inside the internals directory and then find the customers.blade.php file. Let's go back to Chrome, hit refresh. There we go. So now we are working. Now I do prefer the dot syntax. However, you can always use the slash notation if you wanted to. We refresh, we get the exact same thing. But I do think the dot notation looks very clean. So I would probably urge you to stick to the dot notation. So with that figured out, Let's create a data set. We'll say customers equals, and it's going to be an array of customers. And we're going to have John Doe. Let's have Jane Doe. And finally, let's have Bob the Builder. Fair enough. So we have this customers variable that has three customers inside. How do I pass this into my view? Well, any view as a second argument can actually receive an array. So in this array, we're going to say, customers, that's going to be my key. And we're going to match that up to the variable customers. And just like that, you're going to have this customers variable available to you in your view. So how do we access it? Open a PHP tag. And inside here, we'll say for each customers as customer, we're going to want to echo, we'll say li customer, and then close our li tag. All right, let's check out the results in the browser. And there we are. So we now have our data being passed into the view. Just to show you that one more time, we have this array here, John Doe, Jane Doe, and Bob the Builder. And as a second argument to our view, we're passing it as customers. Now this key here is what we are using here. So if we change that to another name, then we would have to use for each and then the variable name will no longer be customers. It will be another name. And if we go back to our browser and refresh, we get the exact same thing. So just know that this key here is what it's going to be referenced to over here. It doesn't matter what you call your variable here. What matters is what you key it when you're passing in this array here. Now, of course, you can only pass in one array into the view and that makes sense. So you're going to have a big array of data and each of the keys will become your variable names in your view. So to wrap that up, I do want to clean up this view a little bit. This is kind of nasty right now, right? So this is where blade comes in and blade does a great job of simplifying all of this for you. So any blade specific syntax will always start with the at symbol. And then we'll say for each very similar to what you're going to do in PHP. 
So for each, customers as customer, but then you don't have to do anything else. You can actually continue to write HTML from this point. So we'll say li, and then to get this customer variable in here, we're going to use two curly brackets. And in the middle of those curly brackets, we're going to put customer. And then to finish this for each, we're going to say at symbol again, and for each. So much cleaner syntax, right? So this will do the exact same thing. And to prove it, I'm going to hit refresh again, and we get an error. And of course, it's looking for customers. Remember, I had changed it to another name. So let's change this back to customers. And there we are. We are back to having our list of customers. To wrap it all up, we have three customers, and we're passing that in with the key customers. And then in here, we're using this new blade syntax for each customers, being the variable name, as a customer. And we're simply echoing it out inside our unordered list. You're making great progress. Keep toying around with this idea until you grasp the concept of passing data to a view. And when you're ready, let's move on to the next lesson.